what is up you guys welcome to my backyard it's christy here small yard big plants uh coming at you from st helens oregon in all its glory um it's kind of a weird day it's like mid-august and we are supposed to get like a huge thunderstorm later tonight so it's getting a little breezy um which in our area it's usually kind of breezy but it's definitely starting to come in so um we had some kind of rain early this morning and i'm anticipating kind of a bigger storm later tonight um go on bonus cat <laughs> um so we are anticipating a storm later tonight so i wanted to run out here um focus on getting some fall plants started and uh, kind of get those going they're gonna live inside the house in my seed starting um kind of cart situation that i have with some grow lights in the living room and um but they're gonna be in there for a little while so that the weather doesn't get um it, it's still august right so it's so hot um, that we don't want our brassicas and things to bolt. We want them to grow well in decent conditions, but not get, uh, not be like, oh no, it's so hot. I need to go to seed right away. Cause otherwise we won't get to eat all the yummy things. Um, so I've got my basket here with all of the wonderful seeds. I'll go through that with you. Um, and then I've got my trays. Um, I've got my seed starting mix cut up, but it's got some, um, kind of really, just light and fluffy um, seed starting and I'm gonna mix in some biotone so it has some fertilizer and some food in there um, for when the seeds are going to need it they don't need that nutrition right away but it is good to have some food in there usually I put in some worm castings I don't have any of that right now um, I ran out so I'm just gonna put in some biotone so that way there's a little extra fertilizer so I won't have to like pot up or feed them too much before I put them actually out in the garden beds later um, okay, so I'm just gonna get going. I've got my gorgeous seed starting trays from Bootstrap Farmer. They are a little bit of an investment, but I will tell you what, these trays last a long time and I got some new ones um, only because I wanted the fun fall colors uh, from Jill Riggin at Whispering Little Farm. She did a series with them and they're just so pretty. So now I have like my, my spring set that's bright and colorful, uh, which is great in the dreary month of February. Um, but for right now, like I'm ready for fall. So let's do these like earth tones and I'm just mm, ready for it. Uh, so yeah, just hang with me. I'm going to prep all my pots, get things ready. And then um, we'll go from there. We'll start planting up at least the brassicas. I at least want to get the brassica family done today um, because they take the longest and they definitely have to be inside. Whereas some of the root vegetables, I could start them, but I could also direct some of them later in the summer and they'll be okay. So here we go. Violet joined me. She's uh, had kind of a rough couple of days. She had some teeth extracted. And so she's having some ice cream and hanging out with me. Teeth. You can show her the new teeth. She's got a tooth fairy came to visit. She's got some windows going. So mm -hmm. she's just eating some ice cream, hanging out with me. Um, anyway, this is Biotone. This is my favorite um, all around organic fertilizer. I always put this in um, when I'm transplanting plants, uh, like I mentioned, I don't have worm casting, so I'm going to put some into my seed starting soil now, and that way it'll be in there. Um, but really, I add this throughout the season. I feel like it's the best. Um, it's just the best. Everything loves it. Everything grows well with it. If you were going to have just like one fertilizer in your shed or basement or whatever in your toolbox for your plants, this is my favorite. This is what I recommend. So you really just want to like get it really mixed in there. You don't have to use a trowel or shovel or whatever. Um, I'll get my hands in the dirt soon enough. All you folks that like to make mud pies when you're little, seed starting is for you. <laughs> it is a good time to get dirty. Hi. Come on. Hey, here's my other kiddo. This is Glory. She wanted to come have her moment of fame, I guess, as I am starting seeds. I'm gonna take my cup and I'm just gonna kind of dip it in and pack it. So you can see I'm kind of pushing down. You don't want it to be like super packed, but. I'm just kind of scruff up the top. 
so you can see it's just nice and level. Make sure it's kind of compressed and stick it in there. All right, so I've got my pots here. I'm just filling them up, capping them, you know, chunking the soil in there, just pushing down a little bit. You don't want it to be like super compacted because you want your roots to be able to move around in there. Um, but you also don't want air in there, right? Because roots don't like lots of air touching them uh, either. So we're just gonna fill them up. Hopefully I'll do the whole tray. I've got a good amount of seeds here, so I think I can fill it up. Mm -hmm. So that amount, that like bowl's worth of soil was enough for about half of the tray. I'm going to mix some more up and catch on the flip side. Alright, mixing up that other bowl. Making mud pies, right? <laughs> Biotone, like I said, super helpful. Put some good food in there. <laughs> Bonus cat, Stormy, trying to get in on the her claim to fame here in the video. She's pretty sweet. I don't mind. So my, uh, the wind I was talking about for the storm that's coming in later blew over my phone camera tripod situation and broke, cracked in half my uh, little like Bluetooth microphone thing. So I hope you can hear me. We'll see if this video ever sees a light of day. <laughs> I don't know. It could be awful. We'll see. But anyway, so I filled up my trays. Let me turn tilt it down so you can see it. Glory's in the pool. You hear a ruckus or you know neighbor dog or whatever i mean this is I, I don't consider this like urban urban now that we live out in holland's but i do have neighbors i mean i'm not you know small yard right i'm in a regular backyard just like a lot of suburban america i guess um i don't have acreage i'll say it is way more peaceful and quiet out here um than it was when i lived out in the city so um, I am grateful for that, but there's still, you know, people. So I might do some music over, who knows? Um, but anyway, I just wanted to show you, I've got my pots ready. These are like two by twos. Um, you could do six cell packs. Those are a lot smaller um, and you can get a lot more seeds going, but then you'll have to up pot them or transplant them sooner. So I like using this size. There's a little bit more heft to it, more room for the roots to develop. And it's, um, they just seem to work better for me. I can handle it better. I don't have to worry too much about them getting root bound faster. So anyway, I've got that um, rinse off my hands and now my seeds, my beloved seeds, future food right here. So given that the, the wind's picking up, storms come in and I do need to harvest some tomatoes and peppers for salsa because I don't want them to split and stuff from the rain that's coming in tonight. Um, I'm just going to really focus on the brassicas. So um, what am I growing? What do I've got in my hand here? I'm going to start some purple Vienna kohlrabi, so yummy, and then here's some more, um, here's some other kohlrabi. This has, uh, it's a duo, so it has purple 
and green. It, it is a brassica, so it is from like the broccoli family, broccoli cabbage family. Um, it tastes crisp like an apple, but it has kind of that like broccoli vibe to it. I'm not sure how else to describe it, but it's delicious. Um, so I like to roast it up. Um, just oven, you know, good old olive oil, some yummy sea salt, pepper, stuff like that. Um, it's delicious. Uh, mix it in with the root vegetables or you can go the raw route uh, slice it up really thin and put it in like coleslaw or salad kind of like with apples and nuts and things it's really good so um and i have some in the summer garden that's growing right now that i'll show you um, but yeah so there's some more kohlrabi two kinds of kohlrabi i've got some um i don't like to grow big headed broccoli just because you they take a long time they have one head um which is yummy but for me given the size of the garden i only have so many garden beds i only have so much space um and it takes a long time so i am actually going to grow broccoli rab or rapini um which is when instead of having one head the um it will grow like um like shoots like offshoots and then you can also eat the stalks which you know, for broccoli, you can eat like a little bit, but you don't want to eat like the big base of the stock because it's just too hard. Um, I mean, you could, I guess, but I don't. Uh, it's a lot of work. So instead, with the rapini, you get um, kind of longer stalks that are a bit more tender and yummy. You can saute them up. It's so good. I've got early rapini, um, broccoli rub. I have spring rapini. So these are two, you know, different seed companies, MI Gardener, Renee's Garden, but they're like the same vegetable. I'm going to grow some. And then I'm also going to do uh, burgundy broccoli. This is from Botanical Interests. It's purple. If you're gonna do it, make it, you know, grow something that makes you smile, right? So how fun to try. Um, and all of these types of things, you know, they're frost tolerant. Um, so we wanna get them going well ahead of the first frost, which for me, I think is around November 1st, if I'm remembering correctly, you can Google it. Um, but, you know, mid-August, I probably could have gotten these in week or two ago but that's okay we're starting now it's never too late if you don't start it you definitely won't get a harvest right so I'm gonna try it um, but this one uh, basically you know it has uh, different heads like the rapini more side shoots and things and I'm just really really excited to do it um, give it a try so three different kinds of uh, broccoli rub I'm gonna do some Romanesco cauliflower. I don't really like cauliflower, to be honest. I don't like to eat it, so I never have grown it before. But the Romanesco, I don't know if you can see the seed packet, but look at how cool. Um, it's got like this neat patterning. It just looks very like textured and neat to look at. So if I'm gonna grow a cauliflower, cause my family likes to eat it, it's gonna look cool. So I'm gonna give it a try. Um, yeah, it grows in like spirals. I don't know. We'll see how it goes. Um, and then one of my other things that I love uh, to grow are Brussels sprouts. Now, I know, I know, I know. Everybody hates to say it. Like, no one wants to admit that they like to eat Brussels sprouts. Uh, I think as a kid, like, didn't taste good, right? My kids don't love it. However, if you cook them right, and when I say right, I mean like in bacon and yummy, like sweet balsamic vinegary kinds of flavors, it's delicious. It's so good. Um, and so just like roast them up. So I've got some Catskill Brussels sprouts, some Long Island Improved. Um, and these are from M.I. Gardner and Baker Creek. Uh, you know, these have been around since like 1800s, Catskill Mountains, they're very cold hardy. And with all of these things, um, and root vegetables too, when you have that cold weather, the frost comes in, it actually like makes the plant, instead of wanting to bolt or make seed, it concentrates the sugars down into that root vegetable or down into the, the part that we like to eat of that plant. Um, same with like the, the Brussels sprouts and things like that. And so those sugars are what make them taste so, so good. Um, same with like kale and things like that that I'll also start um, is it just, the cold weather just makes them taste a million times better. So if you've grown these in the summer, kudos, if they didn't bolt, awesome. I've got some that hasn't bolt, but it probably tastes a bit more bitter than I would like it to. Um, so growing it in the colder weather months is the way to go. And then lastly, the other things that I'm definitely gonna start today um, for sure are two kinds of cabbage. I've never grown cabbage before. 
I've got um, some Red Acre and some one kilo slow bolt. Um, Napa cabbage, uh, says a delicate flavor, soft texture in between lettuce and regular cabbage, uh, creamy yellow interior, um, yummy in stir fries, yummy to roast up. Uh, we're gonna give it a try. I don't know, we'll see. Good old Pinterest will help me find some recipes, I'm sure. <laughs> So I'm going to start making some labels for all of these and then we're going to start putting them in the soil. I should note um, things like the cabbage. One seed is one head of cabbage. So um, you know I love getting seed packets that have a lot of information that help you you know botanical interests, uh, Baker Creek, and my gardener, they, the seed packets will have a lot of information on there, which helps me um, to know like, how do, you, do I put the seed? How long is it gonna take to germinate? Because it's one seed per plant, I wanna start a few of them. So I'm gonna do like two per cell and then kind of see how it goes. My plant tags here, my garden marker, outdoor use. I will say um, these markers specifically uh, will, they don't rub off. They don't, uh, you know, it can rain and I can still see what's going on on the label. Um, even Sharpies, it's in the rain. Like it just, it just dwindles away, wipes away. I don't know. Um, so I found that the garden markers, I don't have any affiliation with them. They just work really well. So, you know, I find tags and I can still know what I planted. Super handy. So here we go. I'm gonna start making my labels and then we'll start putting them in. That's the fun part. camera again because the wind is knocking things over again like I said who knows if this is gonna see the light of day or not we'll see how it goes I'm just trying to space out like if I'm doing things like the burgundy broccoli what I want to do is make sure that like if I'm gonna plant four cells of it I just need to do the front so I know this whole row this whole row is gonna be burgundy broccoli so I don't need to use a label every single time right but if I'm doing other things where like that I'm not kind of not sure about kind of like the Romanesco cauliflower like I said I don't actually like cauliflower um, so we'll see how it goes um, but I'm going to do I did two labels, so I'll just do two cells, and I'll do like a one in each cell. Um, and then, you know, I'll probably do like two of the green kohlrabi or something like that. Um, I feel like the the weather's picking up even more. The wind is, the camera's got knocked over a few times, so I'm just gonna show you really quick. So when I'm ready to plant the seed, I'm gonna take this, I'm just taking my pinky finger and I'm just gonna do like one, two little dimples in that. And I'm gonna grab, we'll do like the cauliflower. Open up your seed packet. And they're actually really small. Um, so they probably don't need to be planted very deeply. It says a quarter inch, but I don't even know if they need to be that deep. So I'm just going to take a couple, just like a little pinch, because look, they're tiny. And I'm just going to put them in each one. I need watermelon too. And then cover them up. And, um, and I'll do that again over here. Make a little dimple. And then just a couple in each one. And this was the Romanesco. So I'm going to take the tag. I'm sticking it in each one. So I don't forget that I have planted in those two cells. Okay. Two 
is the red acre cabbage. Alright, before my camera falls over again. So I have, these ones I have not planted. The only ones I've planted are these two cells right here. So I'm just going to do right here um, are going to be the red acre cabbage. This one I'm doing four. Just kind of see how it goes. Alright, let me just get these in here. Got a little window. <laughs> you do have a little window. Okay, so my garden buddy Violet's here. Um, it's windy, so I'm gonna turn the camera off. We're just gonna kind of fill them in and see if I can show you when we're done. Okay, so um, I have the tray filled out the best that I can. I think this is probably all we're gonna get done today. Um, so you can see I've got uh, Romanesco, cauliflower, which Violet helped me with, red cabbage, Napa cabbage in the front, uh, red, excuse me, purple Vienna kohlrabi. This entire row, all four cells, is the burgundy broccoli. Then I have all four cells of the spring rapini, um, Catskill Brussels sprouts, Long Island improved Brussels sprouts, some kales, and uh, mini pak choy and regular pak choy in the back. So we are gonna, I've gone through, I've put all the seeds in, they look lovely. I went through with my mister um, setting on my hose and just kind of watered it all in with the mister. So that really helped to not disrupt kind of where the seeds were. Um, you know, if you put tons of water on there, then oftentimes it'll like bubble up and your seeds will get displaced. And then you're like, where did my plants go? Well, I'm kind of, we're a little overzealous with the watering. So anyway, this is what we're going to get done with for fall planting today. I think the rest of the things in here, all my lovely like root vegetables and stuff, uh, turnips, carrots, you know, rutabagas, all of that deliciousness. I'm just going to direct some to the garden later um, when I don't have to worry about the wind knocking everything over. Um, and also, I just wanted to show you kind of the last little step that I do. Um, it might seem a little bit extra, but it's really handy is I take cinnamon, just regular ground old cinnamon you get at the store, um, and I sprinkle it over the top. So that way um, it's kind of has some like natural antifungal properties and it can help reduce uh, those pesky little... Um, what do you call them, like fungus gnats that pop up um, whenever you have like stagnant, you know, like moist soil, warm, warmth um, that you'll find like inside. So this really helps to kind of reduce that as well as like any additional like fungus that I don't want on my plants. Um, so I'm just sprinkling some cinnamon over the top and that will help. Um, and it's just kind of a nice, super cheap and easy way to kind of give your little plant babies the best little start in life they can have <laughs> it's kind of awesome um all right so i'm gonna bring this inside I'll... anyway i think i will i will take you with me in that awesome garden behind me just because i know the storm is coming in and i don't want the rain to split my tomatoes and there are a good bunch that i can harvest so i'll take you along to see those because um, i'm gonna make some salsa later it's gonna be delicious i'm here for it i've been waiting all summer for it let's go so yeah it's definitely starting to get windy getting a little overcast I think the storm's gonna roll in soon it's like it's blowing around all our pool stuff um so I just wanted to show you the garden before the storm comes hopefully it doesn't ravage it too much um but here's some you know the zucchini and stuff and we've got little pumpkin our own little weeby little pumpkin which is the cutest thing I've ever seen who knows if we'll have more than one but it is in there some gorgeous zinnias um Ooh, got some cucumbers. I think I will let them uh, keep going in through the storm just because we have a lot of cucumbers inside. But I did want to show you 
Look at the watermelons. They're growing. Isn't that so fun? Violet especially is super psyched. And, and I noticed we've got some tigger melons starting. So we'll see. I wasn't sure if they would even come to anything, but we'll see. Um, and sad, my dwarf tomatoes, they fell, they broke, they snapped over because I didn't support them. So I'm just gonna let them do their thing. We'll see if I get some harvest out of it. Um, but I do have some peppers I might grab and uh, some good old tomatoes. tomatoes lots of little cherries some peppers and some good red tomatoes hiding around yeah look at those I'm making salsa I'm here for it um, I think I also have some thornburn thorburn I guess there's not actually an N in the thorn <laughs> I don't know I've got some good thorburn terracotta Crimson Carmelo back there. I'm gonna harvest those. Anything that looks like it's starting to blush, I'm gonna harvest today so that the rainwater doesn't split them. So let's go, I'll show you what it, the basket looks like when we're done. All right, y'all, I harvested what I could. I'm sweating even though the storm's coming in. It's still very hot because it's the middle of August and I hate it. So I'm gonna show you what I harvested. I'm gonna go in, make some salsa later. Oh, totally worth it. Check it out. Look at that gorgeousness. Blushed tomatoes, got some cool peppers, salatigas. Uh, Cajun uh, bells. We've got some Pippin's Golden Honey, uh, some Jalapeno Sugar Rush Peach right here, which hasn't quite, or maybe that's a Hungarian hot wax. I don't know, but it looks good. Uh, I believe this is a New Mexico Parker. It's my jalapenos. It's gonna be delicious. I cannot wait to eat this salsa. Let's go.